thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a great honor for me to have an opportunity to speak here today. Uh, so, well, I don't quite know um, how this talk fits into the uh, general scheme of things at the conference, but I'll be speaking about one particular paper by Masaki Kashivara and Michel Verne. That's a paper which dates for almost 40 years back, in 1978. Uh, and um, so it sets the so-called kashivara vern problem or kashivara vern conjecture, and I'll now explain what it is about. So, um, so kashivara vern seventy-eight. I, I I won't give you the original formulation of the problem, but it maybe a slightly slightly changed formulation. And the idea is as follows: We're looking at the completed freely algebra with two generators. And uh, we know that this uh, Lie algebra contains an exceptional element called the Baker-Campbell-Hausdorff series. So we can write it as log Ex Ey. And well, this is famously equal to x plus y plus one half commutator x y plus multi commutators and the kashivara vern problem uh, is about the properties of this element so um, well let me try to formulate it um, so the question is to find an element in the automorphism group of this Frehley algebra, which satisfies some number of conditions. And I will enumerate them starting from zero. So the condition zero is as follows. We would like the image of the generators to be conjugate to the generators themselves. Where gx and gy are elements of the exponential, exponential group of L. So L is graded by the number of letters x and y, so we can easily define the corresponding group. And what is the ground ring or ground thing? Yeah, right. So, you're yeah, right. So, let's say K uh, is a field of characteristic zero. So, that's the uh, ground ring. Right. So, then the property one says that the sum of generators. is mapped to the Campbell-Hausdorff series. So the sum of these two expressions is actually equal to x plus y plus one half bracket x y plus one. And then the second property, let me write it down and then make some comments. So it won't be immediately clear what, what I'm saying. So some function, some j of the inverse of f is of the form absolute value h of x plus y minus h of x minus h of y, where, of course, I should say something about all these letters. So let me put it here. First of all, what is j? In fact, well, especially towards the end of the talk, but already now, there will be quite a lot of cheating in what I'm saying. And so J, actually, that's the, that's the heart of the kashivara verns theory. But perhaps I prefer not to say too much about it because it would take a lot of time. But let me say the following. So J is a, a one cos cycle mapping automorphisms of L 
to cyclic words in letters X and Y. So cyclic words, I denote them by something with absolute value. And cyclic means that, for instance, X, Y is equal to Y, X. So these are examples of elements in the space of cyclic words. And how should one think about J? One should probably think about it as a what do you mean by cyclic words? Cyclic words so you, took, you mean words up to cyclic? Yeah, words up to cyclic. So, so we, have an, we take an associative algebra uh, which generates x and y, and we consider cyclic, cyclic words, meaning that this is associative algebra modular commutators. So this is a vector space. Right. So for instance, x, y is equal to y, x. So this is a non-commutative analog of the logarithm of Jacobian. So imagine that you just, uh, when you teach uh, first year calculus, you introduce a Jacobian of a transformation. So here we have an automorphism of a freely algebra with two free generators. This is a kind of non-commutative plane, you can think. And this J is uh, a non-commutative analog of the logarithm of Jacobian from ordinary calculus. In particular, it satisfies, so this one co-cycle property if you take j of f times g, this is f applied to j of g plus j of f. And that's exactly the property that the normal log Jacobian would satisfy. If you take a Jacobian, it would be a product. But if you take a log, there would be a sum. So, so that's. You, you don't have a z for the second term? Sorry? You, you don't have a z for the second term? G. G. No. no, no, yeah, that's, that's, let's, let's take it, uh, unless, of course, maybe I made a mistake here, but uh, let's take it as an exercise. Take an ordinary Jacobian of a transformation and then s check that it satisfies <laughs> roughly this rule, or maybe G, G and F should be exchanged. You should take the vector space generated by cyclic words, not the yes, yes. Yeah, the vector space generated by cyclic words, sure. OK, so that's, uh, so that's one piece of notation. And H is some unknown. Right, now let's, let, let's go back to the right-hand side. So H is a formal power series in one variable. And uh, making link to uh, some of the yesterday's talks, so, so this H is one of the versions of the Duflot function. So that's, that's related to the Duflot functions which were mentioned yesterday. Right. So the question is to find such an f. Of course, at first, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't look like a very natural problem. So let me uh, mention that the motivation Motivation for the KV problem is as follows. A positive solution of the KV problem gives uh, a very natural proof of the Duflo theorem on the isomorphism of the center of the enveloping algebra with a ring of invariant polynomials for G. The Lie algebra over K and dimension G is finite. So, uh, so this is a property of the uh, baker campbell hausdorff series, which ensures the Duflo the theorem. And as you see, even 0 and 1, these are some kind of easy properties. Now, 2 looks at first a little bit esoteric, but that's, that's basically the core of the matter, whether, whether you can solve 2. So H is some particular function? Uh, it, basically, it's negotiable. I think in the original formulation of the problem, H was a particular function, but if you, if you solve it with any H, this would be good enough. So, um, right. Maybe... Uh, one more remark. Uh, 
So if one wants to solve 0 and 1 together, it's So this is this is easy. So there is there is an easy solution of uh, zero and one together. Then solving two perhaps poses problems. Uh, now I would like to like this is a very concrete problem. Let me try to maybe for a second uh, show you a bigger picture. In fact, this allows to inscribe it into a. Uh, uh, do they know that age should be something specific like what? Do they know what is age? Uh, again, so it's it's a little bit negotiable. One can say precise. One, one can one can make it more narrow and say that age is is a precise function. Just just give an expression for it. But I think actually it's sufficient to solve it with any age, and then it would be good enough for proving this isomorphism. So it does, doesn't matter what if if one succeeds to solve it with some particular age. So then then it would be good enough. And then we know what h is one, uh, for, for which h is the solution exists, for which h is it doesn't. So this is known. Ah, this is, it is known for which h is well, the solution of the KV problem or of the Duflo? No, no uh, like if, if one takes h the standard Duflo function, then the problem admits solutions, and this is one particular case when, which, which suits us well. But in principle, h is a bit negotiable. Ah, so it's, not unique, yeah. it's not unique. Yeah, you can you can find solutions with other H's, as uh, Maxim showed at some point. So uh, so maybe uh, a little bit a bigger picture. How how does it uh, fit into into scheme of things? So l let me uh, draw the following diagram. So th there is a family of torsos which groups acting on them. So one of them is a torso of Drinfeld associators. And it is acted by the, uh, there are several versions of it, by the grotten dictach miller group. Let me, let me consider this, this group GRT1. So this is one of the grotten dictach miller groups. So then uh, in number theory, there is a, there is a torso of, uh, formal MZVs, so these are solutions of the so-called double shuffle equations. And, and this is acted by the group, maybe in France I should call it DMR, now sometimes it is called DS, the double shuffle. So the group of symmetries of double shuffle. And then there is a torso of solutions of the kashivar Venn problem. So there are also several versions of the kashivar Venn groups. Let me call one of them, so the similar to GRT, so this is the graded version KRV. And yeah, the, the R, yes, was imported from here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, that's certainly a fair, fair remark, but uh, <laughs> so, so there is a number of uh, links between them. So, um, so due to Furusho, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, an injection from associators to formal MZVs, and, and then correspondingly here there is uh, a map between groups. And then Leila Schnapps showed that formal MZVs give rise to solutions of KV, and here there is, uh, there is also uh, an embedding of groups, and then um, a little bit before, Sharp Torosian and I, we uh, showed that there is a map from associators to solutions of KV, and, and then we made it more precise with Benjamin Enriquez. So, so, so there is, so there is a direct map here, and they, they, they commute. Uh, and here maybe I, I also write at the level of Lie algebras. Here, th this is a group generated by a graded Lie algebra GRT1, which maps to the graded Lie algebra DS, which maps to the graded Lie algebra KRV, and as was relatively recently proved by Francis Brown, so here there is 
an embedding of the Frehley algebra with Greenfield generators, sigma 3, sigma 5, and so on. Uh, so, uh, so there is this uh, quite, quite amazing picture of the world where th th there is this part of the picture which comes from Lie theory, as we indicated, some Frehley algebras and uh, related to the uh, Duflo's the theorem. And here there is a purely uh, number theoretic picture with the double shuffle. And here there is a picture which one can say probably three-dimensional topology, right? So Greenfield associators, this is the braid group with three strands and, uh, um, and topology of three manifolds. And uh, all, all these pictures, so there are embeddings and the conjecture, I think one, one of the big conjectures is that they are actually all the same up to, up to perhaps minor details in definition. So they expect it to be all the same and this is uh, confirmed by various numerical tests um, until maybe some not very high but reasonably high degrees. So what the groups themselves are which kind of groups? They are quasi-bright groups? What kind of groups? So these are, so those, th th those would be a, a, a pro-unipotent groups. Right. So over, over the covers, so with the field K that we introduced in the beginning. Um, so, um, so I want to show you this picture, but actually today uh, I want to show you uh, a new element in this picture. So that's, that, that's basically a picture of the world and I, I would like to add one more column to this picture. So um, now for uh, a short while we'll probably forget about uh, this story and I'll, t I'll be speaking about an entirely different story which was actually mentioned yesterday. That's the Goldman bracket and the one more element which wasn't mentioned yesterday called derived core bracket. So we'll now speak of some kind of two-dimensional topology and then we'll return to this picture and we try to add one more column. So, um, so that's the 2D topology part. So, can, can I ask, so, so, so does it matter which field you take for that or not? Uh, uh, it's expected to, to work uh, over any field of characteristic zero. Okay. It's, yeah. not, it's not to work over Q really? Or? Sorry? All of that is, uh, is not to hold over Q? Uh, you mean like this, this, this certainly holds, yeah, this, this, this holds over Q, but uh, this we don't know whether it holds. Probably, maybe, who knows. All right. All right, so what about the 2D topology part. So let's say sigma is an oriented closed to manifold possibly with boundary. So let's say genus G number of boundary components is N. Uh, for most cases let me assume that there is at least one boundary component. So this will be more convenient for me. Um, so let's denote by pi, pi 1 of sigma. It is a free group if n is at least 1. Yeah, let's say also oriented connected. Um, and we'll be interested in the following, in the following space. So this is a span of a K of homotopy classes of free loops on sigma. So this is the same as uh, the K span of conjugacy classes. in pi, or if you wish, it's also the same as the group algebra of pi over the space of commutators, or this is also the same as k of 
of k in cyclic words in pi, right? So this, these are all the same. Cyclic, you mean because it's a free group? Yeah, because it's a free group. No, but you have to take inverses of generators yeah. as well. Sorry? In quite. Here you have inverses. Yeah, right. OK. Let's. So I went. It's in pi, not an x and y. Yeah, yeah, went a bit too far. You're right. OK, we'll come, come back to it later. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, in fact, it turns out that this space, so this is a vector space over k, it carries several exceptional structures. Uh, is it okay if I use that one? So the first one is the bracket called the golden bracket. It was mentioned yesterday. Uh, let me show you how it, how it looks. So suppose this is our surface and we take two loops on this surface. Since we are interested in homotopy classes of loops, we can always arrange the intersections to be transverse and we can always uh, arrange such that there is only a finite number of intersection points. So let's say this is alpha and this is beta. So then the golden bracket of alpha and beta is equal to a sum over intersections of the representatives alpha and beta. And now we do the following. Once we have the intersection point, we can construct a new free loop. We can go first along alpha and then along beta, starting from this point, right? So let me denote it alpha p beta p. So that's a new loop which starts from p, but well, the initial point doesn't matter. And we multiply by a sign, uh, and the sign measures the relative orientation of the frame given by the tangent vectors to alpha and beta and the orientation of the surface. Right. So that's the first construction. And then there is a second construction called to arrive core bracket. Uh, so this construction does the following. Let me again draw an example. So this will be a sphere with three holes. I now have only one loop. And let me arrange again the self-intersections. If there are any self-intersections to be transverse and to have only finite number of them. So, uh, and delta of, let's call it alpha, delta of alpha will be again sum of uh, self-intersections. If you don't mind, I will use this funny notation. So again, the sign, and then alpha p prime veg alpha p double prime, where alpha p prime and alpha p double prime are two halves or two subloops into which the total loop is split by the intersection point. Um, so let me state a theorem, uh, which is slightly false, and maybe I encourage you to, to catch me. So, this, so this, this is somewhat false. So first of all, due to Goldman, So the bracket is well-defined, which means it's well-defined on homotopy classes. I defined it on representatives, but it's well-defined on homotopy classes. And it's a Lie bracket. So it's Q-symmetric and satisfies the Jacobi identity. This is actually a very nice exercise to check it. Now, uh, the next part due to Turaev, delta is well defined, co Lee, it satisfies the co Jacobi identity. And, uh, well, we can state it in several, several ways. So there is uh, uh, a relation between the bracket and delta, which says that 
Together they form a Lie by algebra. And uh, so GF sigma bracket, call bracket is a Lie by algebra. In practice, this means the following the delta of the golden bracket of alpha and beta is a golden bracket of alpha with delta of beta plus or beta minus the bracket of beta with delta of alpha. So this is technically that's that's the extra relation that one needs to show. Define the bracket with the uh, Sure, that's, that's, that's a good question here. I'm cheating slightly, but not much. Uh, that this means that this guy I interpreted as alpha tensor 1 plus 1 tensor alpha. So that it is well defined. But now here there is actually, I, as I say, this is uh, slightly false. If you don't see it, that's okay. We just uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> is it trivial loops? Something? Yeah, yeah, the trivial, certainly. The trivial loops. Actually, actually this is... This is false. Um, so um, this is false essentially because if you um, if you take a small uh, small you, you see you can always create a small a small self intersection by creating such a piece of a trivial loop and then it will contribute here. So there are two ways to deal with it. Either you say that trivial the class of trivial loops is central inside the Goldman bracket. And then you can just uh, factorize by it. So kill, kill such loops, declare them equal to zero. Or another solution, which is slightly better for me, one can choose a framing on the surface. And if one chooses the framing on the surface, then, uh, then, then it's OK to have, uh, to have trivial loops, because one can no longer create them, because then one can impose some condition on framing. Sorry? Uh, trivialization of the tangent bundle of the surface. And uh, when you consider the bracket of alpha and delta beta, if you interpret alpha as alpha tensor 1 plus 1 tensor alpha, yes. consider it a question of factor of 2 in the computation, you can maybe... No, no, that's, but that, that's just the definition. I, alpha acts by derivations on wedge, wedge of g. It acts, uh, right, it acts on this curly g and it acts by derivations on uh, on the exterior algebra so this is you can you can think of it as the action of der by derivations or like sometimes people write it in this way i act so delta of beta lives in two components g wedge g and you act on the first component plus you act on the second component Ah, okay. You need the quotient of tensor. Okay, depending on convention, mm -hmm. if it's a quotient. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Very well. Uh, so, um, so why is it all of interest for us? Um, right. Let me. Um, uh, perhaps I don't want to. Hmm. Now it gets difficult. What we can. Yeah, probably we sacrifice the picture of the world. Right. Okay, let me make a remark. Um, uh, so there is a natural Filtration of the group algebra by powers of the augmentation ideal. So the kernel of epsilon mapping kp to k by just mapping each, uh, each element of pi to 1. Um, so we can now do the following. Let's complete k pi and g of uh, sigma using this filtration. And let's consider 
the associated graded. So let me call it G0 of sigma. So that's the associated graded. I must say that here I'm also cheating a little bit. In, in truth, this is the correct filtration only uh, say for either, either if you have genus zero or you have only one uh, component of the boundary, but otherwise one should do something slightly more complicated. But maybe at the moment we kind of, we can return to it later. But rough, in, in many cases that's the correct filtration. So now uh, if we have uh, a filtration and then the corresponding graded space, we can ask what happens uh, with the golden bracket and Turayev core bracket. And sure enough they define a Lie algebra structure on this graded, on this graded space. So together with the corresponding graded bracket and core bracket, so this is, this is a new Lie algebra. Well, now one can ask the following natural question. So we have, for a given surface, we have two Lie algebras and the graded version. So the question is, will they be isomorphic to each other or not? Right? Um, so let me, um, let me start answering this question in a particular case. Um, hmm. So let me start with the following situation. So I take sigma to be of genus zero with three boundary components. So this is my sphere with three holes. Um, so let me choose generators of pi 1, let's say capital X and capital Y. Uh, and then the claim is, you see, you see now we need to make some connection to the kashivara vern problem, so assume Assume we have an automorphism of the free Lie algebra. So then it turns out that every automorphism of L induces a map from G of sigma to a graded of G of sigma. So this map looks as follows. First of all, uh, it induces, let me call it F hat. It induces the following change of variables. So uh, since we're working on a field of characteristic zero, we can replace those generators by exponentials of small x and y, generators of a free Lie algebra, and then apply this automorphism f. In particular, like f can be equal to one, right? Then you don't do anything, just send map capital X to exponential of X. Now coming back to coming back to this picture. Right? So I was saying K of cyclic words, but cyclic words in what? So assume that we, we've chosen some basis of pi one. In this case the basis is X and Y. So here will be cyclic words in X, Y x minus 1, y minus 1, with uh, standard relations that x times x minus 1 is equal to 1, y times y minus 1 is equal to 1. Uh, and if we make the, such a substitution, what we obtain, we obtain cyclic words, a priori infinite series in cyclic words in small x and small y. And it turns out that this is exactly how this, uh, how this graded, graded version of g of sigma looks like. So such a map induces, so cho a choice of an automorphism induces for us a map from this space to that space. Now the question is, will it be, uh, 
I don't understand what is the f of uh, oh. L x y is what is the the Lie algebra, no? Yeah, yeah, sure. Is it okay? Yeah, I define it this way. Mm -hmm. That's essentially because an automorphism of free Lie algebra uh, uniquely extends to an automorphism of, uh, of a free associative algebra. Okay. So now let me, uh, let me state some results. Does the, does the gradient lead by algebra have a description in terms of connection? Um, wait a second. Maybe I should say that the filtered, filtered Lie by algebra, right? That's more like related. Goldman bracket uh, was inspired by the Atiyah bot construction, right? So, uh, so that's may, maybe I'll, I'll talk about it in two minutes. Okay. So, um, right. So let me state a theorem uh, and give lengthy comments about it. Um, So let's say F is an automorphism of a free Lie algebra. Uh, so then F hat, the map from G of sigma with a Goldman bracket to the graded version of G of sigma with a graded bracket. Note that I, I meet for a moment the co-bracket. Is an isomorphism. If F satisfies 0 and 1. Right? So there is 0 and 1. So these are these are the zeros and first Kashavar Verne equations. And if they are satisfied, so then uh, this is an isomorphism of Lie algebras. So how you define it? F group is sends x to some infinite series and then now you Yeah. yeah. So how do you define this? Oh but everything is completed, right? Ah, complete. Yeah yeah everything is completed. Yeah yeah if whatever. Because to, to take the grade it I, I first completed it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so let's discuss it a little bit. First of all, let me attribute, let me attribute this theorem. Um, I think in some versions, so there are, there are several versions of it. I think it was proved by Masio Turaev and Kawazumi Kuno. And there is also um, an interesting version of this theorem and of the proof due to my graduate student Florian Neff, uh, which shows that this theorem is a particular instance of some rigidity in uh, non-commutative Poisson geometry of Kontsevich. So one can interpret it also in, in this way. Also, so to some extent we saw this, uh, some version of this theorem yesterday in uh, Philip's talk because um, so this is the Goldman bracket is essentially in, in called symplectic or Poisson structures on moduli of, uh, of flat connections. And this story essentially encodes some kind of uh, carry of cost and surreal brackets on residues at the, so this is the regular, what, what Philip was referring to as a regular situation. So there are regular singularities and this would be in that terminology, some kind of Betty picture and this would be some kind of um, Durham picture. So here, these are these are not answering your question. These are not connect or these are uh, residues of connections. That's what this thing encodes. And these are holonomies of connections. Right. And well, already that I think is quite interesting. So these are the zeros and the first equation. Right. Um, now the second theorem.
So let's now look at the theory with a core bracket. Is an isomorphism. So let's assume, let's assume that zero and one are satisfied. So then this is an isomorphism if and only if f satisfies two. Um, I know this is true, but I still find it very, very surprising. Why? Because you see, what, what is this two about? I, I, I didn't tell you in, in, in truth, but you see this is about some kind of non-commutative uh, Jacobians, right? Non-commutative analogs of the Jacobian. Now, what, what is this, uh, th this story is about? That's about the behavior of self-intersections of homotopy classes of curves on a two surface. Frankly, wh wh why, why is it the same? It remains a mystery to me. Th this is true, but uh, I don't really understand it very well. So, zero, so here, one and two. sorry. Yeah, in fact, like I assume, let's assume, assume that zero and one are satisfied. So then, uh, so we, we already know that the Lie algebras are the same, that the Lie by algebras are isomorphic if and only if f satisfies two. For a specific function h. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter with the function h. Right. So, as, as I say, so this is quite a mystery to me, and this is uh, due to Kawazumi Kuno, Neff, and myself. Um, yeah, just interrupt you for a second. Sure. Just also this uh, formality coming from Hilliard geometry. For example, if you have complex structure, mm -hmm. you'll give some uh, specific f hat. You know? um, yeah, yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, for, ge for general surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're saying that it would give some. Yeah, no. If here, consider only genus zero three points. It's only one complex structure. But, yeah. for, for but but let me. Oh, but maybe let 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 me just advance for by one minute and we look at the other. It okay. is not clear what again. It is not clear what. I'm confused. What is the definition of this map, the roof map? Because you you map yeah. the the elements capitalized and capital Y in the in the fundamental groove of surface yeah. to some formal expressions, but they are not. They are in the. Completed universal enveloping algebra. And yes. not, but then you want <coughs> just to go to the graded Lie algebra. Yes. So how do you do it? You have to okay, you see, like, let's first of all, confusing you was one of my purposes, certainly. <laughs> so this is achieved, right? <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, let me give an example. Suppose you had an expression of this type. So this was uh, a cyclic word in generators of the fundamental group. Right? Or maybe let's say x, y minus 1, doesn't matter. So now we map it to exponential f of x, exponential minus f of y. And this is an infinite, uh, a priori, an infinite sum of cyclic words in letters x and y. And it turns out that. Uh, this is exactly exactly this space. This space is up infinite or whatever finite or infinite linear combinations of cyclic words in letters x and y. Ah, you play Right. So this is a B B C H. Maybe you can apply. Or one can apply B C H as well. But then still you need to to take to, to take the series for the exponential function. No, but I don't know because the for the Lie algebra, free Lie algebra. Oh, but G G of so this guy, this gadget, or that gadget is not a freely algebra, right? So this is a, uh, for instance, the, the Goldman, Goldman Lie algebra, that's not the same as L of x, y, right? So elements of the Goldman Lie algebra are of this sort. So I take uh, words, finite, or maybe if, if I want to complete, I can also have some kind of infinite words in generators of uh, the fundamental group, and then I take their the modular cyclic rotations, right? So this, the Goldman, 
uh, recall the, the elements of the Goldman Lie algebra, they are all of that sort, right? I, I can take some loops in my surface. So these are, this, this is not L of x, y, just and, and, and this graded, graded gadget is not L of x, y. Yeah, listen, but then you have to fix some combinatorial way to identify cyclic words as elements of G sigma. Yes, of, of G sigma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 so this is, one needs to prove on the way some kind of statement about the structure that these are cyclic words in uh, letters small x and y. Yeah, sure. So your big x is equal to the small x? Oh, that's my map, right? Big x is mapped to exponential of small x and then further mapped to exponential of f of small x. Right? They are not equal. These are two different, these are two different uh, vector spaces and, and I arrange a family of maps between them which depend on, the, uh, on capital F. And sometimes this induces an isomorphism between Lie by algebra, and sometimes not. So is it possible to just remind me what is small x? Oh, what is in, in uh, okay. Like, for instance, you can think of uh, small x and y as generators of homology. So that would be one consistent picture. So the big x is the loops and the small x is a sort of homology. Yeah. Small x is a homology class corresponding to this loop. Right, um, okay, so now let me, let me pose some number of, uh, so I, I will still state one theorem and I pose a number of questions. Um, so maybe, um, maybe one question that we don't quite understand, we, we have some idea but it's not completely clear. So here this picture, as I said, it's closely related to the uh, to Philip's talk of yesterday because the Goldman bracket is uh, intimately related to the uh, atier board structure on the moduli space and this bracket is uh, intimately related to the structure on the residues to the uh, kirillov kostin surya bracket. Now what about those deltas? In fact, um, at least I, I don't know what's their meaning for the moduli spaces. So this looks as a very fine problem related to, to D topology. but we don't really know what, what this means, even though it looks very natural. Now, uh, let me spend the last, the last five minutes uh, uh, on talk, talking about the surfaces of higher genus. Um, so I focused my attention on the sphere with three holes because it is related to the, uh, to the standard kashavara vern problem. However, uh, there is a similar theorem or the same kind of theorem. So there is a similar result for arbitrary genus and arbitrary um, number of boundary components. In fact, uh, not all of these problems are independent in the following sense. So you can solve all of them if you know how to solve it for a sphere with three holes and for a torus with one boundary component. So the only non-trivial, so the second non-trivial example is this, pro is, uh, is, is, uh, is this statement. So in order to solve this statement, you need to replace the KV problem with something else. So what is the KV problem for, for this, for the surface of genus one with one boundary component? Well, let me, let me formulate it. So one needs to find, one needs to find F it's going to be again, just by chance, it's going to be again an automorphism of a freely algebra with two generators. Automorphism. 
Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, an automorphism of a free Lie algebra with two generators, which satisfies, again, two equations. There will be no equation zero, but there will be equations one prime and two prime. And equation one prime uh, says the following, F, Yeah, yeah, everything is completed. So now, instead of the Campbell-Hausdorff series, we'll have um, the group commutator of EX and EY. So this is some kind of symplectic, symplectic property, which was studied a lot and solved by Masuyo. And then, no sorry? It's, a, it's an exact formula, no correction. No, it's a term. No, like the big Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's instead of BCH, yeah. And then the second formula, the second equation will look like that. So the Jacobian will be a, uh, a cyclic, cyclic word with a Duflo function of the, of the Lie bracket of x and y, and then there will be some correction terms with other function. So this is a fixed function, which depends on x and y. So it turns out that such, an equa such a pair of equations, it would ensure that there is um, there is an isomorphism between the non-graded and graded versions. Um, so here, so there is a following question. Before the motivation, recall the motivation for the original kashivar event problem was the proof of the Duflo's theorem, right? So now we have another pair of equations and we don't quite know what, what it means in Lee's theorem. Um, well, something maybe not as grand as Duflo's theorem, but it would be still interesting to know. Is, 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 there, is there some meaning to such a statement when the product map is replaced by the commutator map? So I, I don't quite know. Maybe Professor Kashivara and Professor Verne can help us <laughs> with this interpretation. Um, and there are, there are, there are sim the, the results for other surfaces, they can be built uh, from these two building blocks. Um, well, with this question, I would like to stop. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a question or comment? Yes. So uh, just to emphasize certain things, uh, so you, you said that first that the definition of delta was not uh, uh, sufficient, was not correct and stated because of the identity loop and that you have two ways to fix it, either in modding out or using a framing, but then you made other statements, so it is not clear which convention you use for the other. Uh, I think, um, yeah. And then it is not, you, okay, so this is one question and also uh, what was, there was another question about the filtration, you said it's not by, in general, by... Okay, yeah, let me answer these two questions. So, uh, let's say, to, I, I made a relatively strong statements in my theorems, and for that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more convenient to have, uh, to have delta defined on a bigger space, which means to add framing. Because it, it kind of pro uh, proves, in fact, uh, there was even more cheating. I, I only showed you uh, the, the Lie structure and Lie by algebra structure, but there is a lot more to the story because actually it's more convenient to work with so-called double brackets of Vandenberg. So this, but okay, if, if one even works with Lie brackets, it's more convenient and one gets stronger statements. For instance, if and only if statement there, for, for that, it's, be, it's, it's better to have a framing. I, I, I think we don't know how to prove if and only if, if we delete the, uh, the trivial loop. So then it gets more difficult to prove things. 
So, uh, so this was a question about the setup and now about the filtration. If you have both handles and uh, boundary components, then it's better to assign to A and B cycles of a handle uh, filtration degree one and to boundary components filtration degree two. So this would make a natural filtration uh, from which one obtains um, good objects. So that's, that's the tricky part. So if you have both handles and so, so then the uh, filtration is somewhat more complicated. And can you describe the definition of delta using framing? Uh, definition of delta using framing. Let's say, maybe in a private discussion. <laughs> okay. yeah. And uh, about, uh, I didn't get the uh, status of the last, is it conjecture or theorem or uh, uh, this, this one prime to prime? So, okay, there are two statements. So one, let's say there are two theorems. So theorem one says that uh, one prime and two prime imply imply the um, isomorphism. And the second theorem says that one prime and two prime admit solutions. And, uh, and uh, then solution, does it depend on complex structure on the elliptic curve? Right, so the, uh, yeah. so, so here what, um, what we do, we steal formulas uh, from Benjamin Enriquez in his theory of elliptic associators. And um, so I think probably, okay, Let's say the hope is that from any elliptic associator you can construct a solution and in this case there would be a parameter of the elliptic curve. But that we don't know at the moment how to prove. We only prove it with some particularly simple formulas which probably mean that this parameter is sent somewhere to infinity or to, to, one, of the, uh, to, one, of the, uh, to one of the special points. So we don't know. May pro hopefully there is a fa the whole family of solutions which depend on, on a complex structure, but... Yeah, but uh, just a question to related to this one, but the definition of graded, it should depend on, 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 on the complex structure. No, no, it's, weight no. it's weight filtration. No. It's weight filtration. Yeah, yeah. So but they both topologies, so then probably the RAM should be removed because the RAM does depend. All right. As you say, completion at the identity, it, it, it's, it's, it's localized. Uh, is it possible? Yeah, so the question, you, you said that somehow you can now extend it to arbitrary surface, yes. but does that mean that you have some kind of compatibility between these two things? Uh, let's say... W I mean, one they're both highly non-unique, right? So, so, uh, um. Oh, compatibility between sort of genus zero and genus one. I mean, you said there was some statement genus zero and some statement genus um, one. So to extend it to arbitrary genus, do you need some compatibility between the two? Or? Yeah, sure. You, you, you need some kind of compat. Yeah, okay. So you need compatibility. For instance, I think you, you need the Duflow functions to be the same. If and you is, want is, to is it enough or because I mean, uh, if you fix probably. the Duflow function, Let, because okay. this capital F will probably still be not unique. Let's say the, right? the answer is known, but uh, whether it's known to me right now, uh, like kind of that's, that's my guess. That's enough to, to match the Duflow functions. But otherwise, yes, I think uh, maybe, maybe not in, in, in another thing to say. So we are producing both solutions from Greenfield associators. And one can, for instance, use the same associator to produce both solutions. That would be much stronger compatibility, but I don't think it's needed for gluing. Any other question? So, a question. So, so is the Goldman bracket uh, related to the Nishitz uh, uh, Osvald Sabo constructions uh, in the uh, Yanfler theory? You know, when they, they look at the uh, Morphy disk and they. they end up with curves and, and resolving this, the uh, world being I mean, it looks a bit similar. I don't so know. Could, could be that it, I mean, if you start from, when you look at the, uh, uh, at the picture with the red group and the, mm -hmm. and the, the, the Haker algebra, the quotient of the red group, uh, so I'm wondering whether, the, uh, whether the structure there with the Goldman bracket, uh, 
uh, someone says another, there's a, some sort of finite dimensional quotient which would be the uh, Lichit, so Bar, Sabo, or Algebra. Uh, Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, why would, would be? One of your field theories that might make sense uh, 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 to, I think, to have those, uh, those two constructions. Okay. No, but maybe, maybe you're right, but I, I don't know. Any other question or comments? So if not, so thanks to Anton. <laughs>